Some of Hollywood's most popular stars have died at the height of their careers. In this video, we pay tribute to 18 actors who died before their last movie was released. Chadwick Boseman became a modern-day icon when he played Marvel's Black Panther, a superhero known for both strength and wisdom. Boseman played real-life heroes, too. Jackie Robinson in the movie 42, Thurgood Marshall in Marshall, and James Brown in Get On Up. Chadwick Boseman died August 28, 2020 of colon cancer at the age of 43. Three months later, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom was released, earning him a posthumous Golden Globe Award and an Oscar nomination. Luke Perry gained fame playing teen heartthrob Dylan McKay in Beverly Hills 90210. Years later, a new generation of TV watchers got to know him as Archie's dad in Riverdale. Perry also had a noteworthy film career, with roles in movies including Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Eight Seconds, and The Fifth Element. Luke Perry died of a stroke March 4, 2019, at the age of 52. His final appearance came in Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, released a few months after Perry's death. Cameron Boyce was a rising star of Disney, beloved by young viewers for his roles in the Disney Channel's Descendants series, in which he played Carlos Deville, son of the great Disney villain Cruella Deville. He also appeared in the Disney Channel's Jesse, as well as feature films including Eagle Eye and Grown Ups and its sequel. Boyce died of an epileptic seizure July 6, 2019, at the age of 20. Three of his films were released posthumously, Runt, Mrs. Fletcher, and the third installment of the Descendants series. John Hurt was Oscar-nominated for his roles in Midnight Express and The Elephant Man. Director David Lynch called him simply the greatest actor in the world. Hurt's performance in Alien gave us one of cinema's most unforgettable moments when an alien burst out of his chest. John Hurt died January 25, 2017, at the age of 77. He then appeared in three posthumous films, Damascus Cover, My Name is Lenny, and That Good Night, in which he played a terminally ill filmmaker. Carrie Fisher was just 19 when she took on the role of Princess Leia in the first film of the Star Wars saga. It was only her second acting role, and it profoundly shaped her career. When a new Star Wars trilogy dawned with 2015's The Force Awakens, Fisher was back, playing Leia as a general and mentor to the film's young resistance fighters. Carrie Fisher died December 27, 2016 of cardiac arrest at the age of 60. Fans would receive a poignant farewell in two more films, The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. Anton Yelchin had a short but busy career. In a little over 15 years, he appeared in more than 60 films and television shows, including Charlie Bartlett and Terminator Salvation. Most knew him from the rebooted Star Trek movies, in which he played Starfleet navigator Pavel Chekhov as a wide-eyed teenage mathematical prodigy. Anton Yelchin died June 18, 2016, in a car accident at the age of 27. One month later, Star Trek Beyond, the third in the series, was released. Alan Rickman played great villains, notably Professor Snape in the Harry Potter films and the terrorist Hans Gruber in Die Hard. But his career was widely varied, and he also played romantic leads, comedic roles, and more in movies including Sense and Sensibility, Galaxy Quest, and Love Actually. Alan Rickman died January 14, 2016, of pancreatic cancer at the age of 69. After his death, he could be heard voicing Absalom the Caterpillar in Alice Through the Looking Glass and seen in the thriller Eye in the Sky. Robin Williams won the hearts of fans everywhere with his manic comedy in wacky film and television roles ranging from an alien in Mork and Mindy to the voice of the genie in Disney's Aladdin. 
As he matured as an actor, he impressed audiences with more dramatic roles in films like Dead Poet Society, The Fisher King, and Good Will Hunting. Robin Williams died by suicide August 11, 2014, after a struggle with the brain disease, Lewy body dementia, at the age of 63. He took his final bows in three posthumously released films, A Merry Friggin' Christmas, Absolutely Anything, and Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. Philip Seymour Hoffman was an extraordinary actor at the peak of his career in 2014. He'd won the Best Actor Oscar for Capote and starred in such films as The Master and Charlie Wilson's War. He also joined the Hunger Games series in its second movie, playing game maker and rebel leader Plutarch Heavensby. Hoffman died February 2, 2014 of a drug overdose at the age of 46. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Parts 1 and 2 were both released posthumously, and the final film was reworked slightly to account for his death. Paul Walker built his career on fast cars, rising to popularity with his starring role in 2001's The Fast and the Furious. He would go on to star in five of the film's sequels, as well as movies including Joyride, Eight Below, and Flags of Our Fathers. Paul Walker died November 30, 2013, in a car accident at the age of 40. Furious 7 was his final film. He died halfway through filming, and his brothers served as his stand-ins in order for the movie to be completed. Whitney Houston was one of the greatest singing stars of her time, and she expanded her career to include acting when she starred in the hugely popular 1992 romantic thriller, The Bodyguard. Its soundtrack album became the best-selling movie soundtrack of all time, and Houston's follow-up performances in Waiting to Exhale and The Preacher's Wife were hits as well. Whitney Houston died of an accidental drowning February 12, 2012, at the age of 48. Her final film, Sparkle, was released six months after her death. Bernie Mac made us laugh over and over with both his stand-up routines and on TV, first in Moesha and then in The Bernie Mac Show. He was just as funny in movies. He starred in Ocean's Eleven and its sequels and turned more heads in films like Friday, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, and Bad Santa. Bernie Mac died August 9, 2008 of pneumonia at the age of 50. Three of his films were released after his death, Madagascar, Escape to Africa, in which he played the voice of Zuba the Lion, Old Dogs, and the musical comedy Soul Men. Heath Ledger rose from a teen star to serious critical acclaim over the course of his too short career in films like The Patriot, A Knight's Tale, and Monster's Ball. With Brokeback Mountain, he was dubbed one of the finest actors of his generation, but the role that would surpass that one to define his career also brought it to a close. Heath Ledger died January 22, 2008 of an accidental overdose at the age of 28. His mesmerizing performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight, released six months after his death, earned him a posthumous Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. A second posthumous film, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, came out the following year. Richard Harris had a decades-long film career from his 1959 debut until his very last film in 2002. He played King Arthur in Camelot, for which he received an Oscar nomination, Gunfighter English Bob in Unforgiven, and Marcus Aurelius in Gladiator. A new generation discovered Harris when he took on the role of the wizard Dumbledore as the film adaptations of the Harry Potter series began. Richard Harris died October 25, 2002 of Hodgkin's disease at the age of 72. He died just before the release of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Michael Gambon took over the role of Dumbledore for the remaining films. Aaliyah was just 12 when she signed with Jive Records and 14 when she recorded the first album of an acclaimed musical career. 
She added acting to her resume a few years later when she starred in Romeo Must Die. Critics praised Aaliyah's performance and movie audiences looked forward to more. Aaliyah died August 25, 2001 in an airplane accident at the age of 22. Her second and last film, Queen of the Damned, was released six months after her death. Chris Farley pursued comedic fame with the frenetic energy that became his trademark as one of Saturday Night Live's best-loved performers. Farley began starring in movies when he was still an SNL cast member, starting with Wayne's World. Post-SNL, he made audiences laugh with Tommy Boy and Black Sheep. Chris Farley died December 18, 1997, of a drug overdose at the age of 33, the same age at which his idol John Belushi had died. Two films were released after his death, Dirty Work, in which he had an uncredited cameo, and Almost Heroes. John Candy got his start on Second City Television, where he was an original cast member of the sketch comedy show that gave Saturday Night Live a run for its money. He went on to star in comedy after comedy in the 1980s, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Uncle Buck, The Great Outdoors, and many more. John Candy died March 4, 1994, of a heart attack at the age of 43. He left two films to be released after his death, the western send-up Wagons East and Canadian Bacon, in which Candy's character leads a bumbling attack on Canada. Bruce Lee brought martial arts to the U.S., popularizing what had only been a niche interest before his electrifying kung fu films hit American theaters. He starred in just five movies, including Fist of Fury and Way of the Dragon, but between their exciting portrayal of his art and the studio he opened to teach it, he created a generation of martial arts fans and practitioners. Bruce Lee died July 20th, 1973, of a brain edema at the age of 32. His death came just six days before the release of his film, Enter the Dragon. James Dean endures as one of the favorites of 1950s cinema, still a major star more than 65 years after his death. Amazingly, that star status is based on just three feature film roles, only one of which came out while he was still alive. After a handful of small, uncredited roles, Dean made his debut in East of Eden, released just months before his death. James Dean died September 30, 1955, in a car accident at the age of 24. His final two films were later released, Giant, which earned him the first posthumous Oscar nomination for Best Actor in Academy History, and the teen angst classic, Rebel Without a Cause. You can read more about the lives of the people featured in this video on Legacy.com, you can also follow Legacy.com on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube to discover the latest obituary news headlines and honor fascinating lives.